Creation groans for the revealing of the sons of God. His holy invasion. For a righteous revolution. Forged in his fire. Weaponized for warfare. Roaring in his rest. And dancing in his reign. Hello, hello, welcome Cimarron family and welcome to any new uh, viewers that might be joining tonight. I'm Kelly Marie and I'm the founder of the Cimarron tribe. We truly embrace the wild nature of Christ, the wild nature of the Holy Spirit. And so I am looking forward to what the Holy Spirit is going to pour out um, tonight on this broadcast and I'm going to wait a few minutes because normally I don't do a Tuesday live broadcast, but the spirit of the Lord wanted me to come on tonight and do this. So I'm just going to wait, give everybody a chance to join in. Welcome once again to my YouTube community and welcome to my Facebook community. Please let me know where you're joining from. If you're in a different nation, please let me know the country that you're joining from. And if you're in the United States in my neck of the woods, please let me know what state you're joining from. And let me know too, you guys, if you were able to witness and experience the solar eclipse that we had yesterday. I would love to hear if you guys got to actually experience that where you were, if you were in the path of that totality of the eclipse, I wasn't, I didn't get the opportunity, but I did get to see some beautiful pictures of those that did get to witness it. So let me know again, if you got to have that experience and um, praise God, because I'm telling you, I want to share something with you guys that uh, took place the night before this eclipse has occurred. And I know that you guys have heard several prophetic voices that have shared their part, what they have heard from the Holy Spirit. Those that really heard the true, pure word of the Lord, right? And so I gonna, I'm gonna share uh, my part and also let you guys know, uh, if you happen to join me on Sunday, last Sunday, not this previous Sunday, but uh, on uh, Resurrection Sunday, where the Lord wanted me to do a communion service, how many of you got to join that? And if you did, what you experienced, because it was all about we remember. It was all about being remembered by the Spirit of God, which means to come into union. So the opposite of remember is dismember. And we began to target the area and said, Lord, thank you that every place where there was demonic activity, any demonic disturbance, demonic strongholds that wanted to, that caused me to be dismembered, meaning where the enemy came in to disturb our union, to disturb my covenant with you, to disturb the places that I need to dwell with you and rest in your presence and go deeper to experience the things that I need to see and behold in your presence, to go deeper, to be more equipped in my calling and what it is that you've called me to do. So it was a really beautiful experience. I know mine was, I was really blessed in the presence of God and, and what he did. So Again, I want you guys to just share if you happen to join. And if not, there's always the replay. You can go back. But the reason I'm mentioning this is because it's like not a, a, a traditional communion. And the Lord had me do, the Lord actually had me have wine. And sorry, I had a lifesaver. So that's why my tongue is bright red. <laughs> Let me drink some water. But that's why the Lord 
the Lord wanted me to, to use wine. And the reason he did is because that's what he used before he went to the cross. But also he wanted me to use wine to share that prophetic word that there is such a great outpouring coming and God is opening up that new wine and coming out of our wine press. And so there's amazing things that are about to take place. We have entered into the very month of April that actually is the beginning of the year on God's calendar, which is 2024. And April 22nd, I will be doing another communion because we're celebrating the Passover. This is where Israel celebrates the Passover. And so we're going to be doing that as well. So let me go ahead and say hello to you guys. Hi, Peggy. Welcome. Daphne, welcome. Esther, Liz, Sherry, Rennell, Kelly Z. And let's see, Maureen, welcome. Lori, welcome. Okay, you guys, there's something I need to cover. Tonight's word of the Lord is very serious. Before I get started in it, I got a question. For those of you that have been with me throughout the, the past few years, how many of you remember when the Lord had me release a very serious but a very deep revelatory teaching on the Liberty Bell versus the Statue of Liberty? Uh, it, was, it was really deep. I'll never forget it. And uh, matter of fact, what's interesting is I got an email from a man of God this March, and I believe it was March 28th. And he emailed me on March 28th and said, Kelly, do you, can you please give me that link to that teaching you did about the Statue of Liberty and the Liberty Bell? And I did that teaching September, 2021. For those of you that remember, God sent me to Philadelphia. I had a specific strategic kingdom assignment that I was to decree and release the sound of heaven and release intercession in the heart of our nation. The heart of our nation is Philadelphia. And so I, so this is, uh, so I'm mentioning this because when I went the first time on my birthday, September 7th, while I was still in Philadelphia, the spirit of God came upon me and released a very heavy weighty word. And I'm going to share that tonight as well. But some of you, you remember. So tonight I'm going to give a summary and go back into some depth in what God had me release because it's very serious. The reason this is happening is because I didn't even know until April the 5th or April the 6th, there was someone who posted a, a post about the Statue of Liberty being struck by lightning on April the 3rd of this year. And it was right before the 4.8 earthquake that ended up hitting, and I believe it's New Jersey and New York, okay? But I didn't know about it because I don't I don't watch a lot of news. I, I tell you guys all the time, I listen to the news broadcast from heaven. Jesus is our anchor man because he keeps us anchored in the truth that he is. He keeps us anchored in his peace. He keeps us anchored in his love and his joy, right? That is our strength. So it's so important that we pursue the voice of the Lord and what is being broadcast out of heaven where our spirit is seated in heavenly places with Christ, right? That's important. But I did not know. I did not know. And as soon as I saw that, I felt the Holy Spirit so strong. And I heard the Spirit of God say, I am going to torch her flame, okay? I heard these words. I am going to torch her flame. Some people wrote about it. I don't know too much in depth of what they wrote. Some ministers possibly too as well. But there was something the Lord made known to me. It wasn't just the fact that lightning struck the Statue of Liberty. The lightning struck something very specific, and it was the torch of the Statue of Liberty. And that's why the Lord said, I'm going to torch her flame. And I'm going to dive into this because it's very important. 
It's very important. We're going to have a lot of foundational biblical scripture about what God says when he releases his lightning. Okay. We have to understand this, that lightning literally comes out of the very throne of God. The thunder and the lightning have a specific purpose and it comes out of the seven spirits of God. And it literally brings terror, terror upon his enemies. I mean, major destruction, major terror. So there is something very serious that happens when God releases his lightning from his throne. So we're going to dive into those scriptures because we want to understand the the we're going to take a deeper dive. You guys know I'm I'm that kind of deep sea diver. What does deep sea diver mean? It means we dive deep from the sea of revelation, from the sea of glass out of the throne room. There there it's it's meaty. I can't get into too much of that right now tonight. But we are deep divers. We're deeply in love with God. So if we're deeply in love with God, we desire to dive deep. We desire to go deep. So we're going to go deep on why that lightning, because listen, we know that lightning strikes that thing uh, several times throughout the year. But for some reason, this thing went, this thing like went all over the news. People were just spreading this thing like crazy. And I believe the reason why is because God wanted to get everybody's attention. You know, that the, he's very strategic in his time. Okay. Before we go into that, okay. What I want to talk about tonight is this. At the end of the broadcast that I did when we did our communion service, the Lord showed me something very holy and very serious. And I saw Jesus, our King of glory, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. I saw Jesus take the hand of his bride. And he took her, this is the right hand of Jesus, taking hold of the hand of his bride on her left side. He took uh, the hold of his bride and he began to take her into a place that had been sealed up for so many generations. This is something out of heaven that has not yet been open and made known to his bride. And so what I was seeing was the Lord was taking his bride and he was leading her into a place that had been sealed up, but now he broke the seal and he was taking her into something she's never encountered before never heard before. And we're going to go into that scripture, matter of fact, because that scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined or comprehended what God has prepared for those who love him. Okay. This is for those who are in a true blood covenant, okay? This means these the bride is one who walks in a selfless, sacrificial love. That her heart, this is how we understand the difference between the bride of Christ and people of God. The bride of Christ, okay, is just like Esther who said the only reason that I want to even become a queen is because I am in love with the heart of the king. I want to know what he desires, what is in his heart. So the, a bride desires to, to fulfill the desire of her husband's heart. A true bride is focused on the dream in the heart of her husband the desire in the heart of her husband. It is something that naturally happens because they're so in love. She's so in love with him, okay? And so the bride, because Jesus knows who is really in love with him. And so he's taking his bride into a very 
private, serious place that he's about to reveal things that are very deep and very serious. And these things that Jesus is revealing to his bride is going to cause her to weep and step into a greater discipline. And I'm saying that for myself as I'm saying it, addressing the real bride of Christ, that what we're about to see and take hold of, that's very serious, okay, is going to thrust us into such a deeper state of discipline. And the word discipline really means to love thyself means that you know that you have to do this this is necessary for a specific purpose that's why we discipline ourselves because we understand what's necessary it has to be done it isn't well i'll think about it or well if i feel like it it's a destiny demand sacrifice okay destiny demand sacrifice and so again we're gonna experience something very deep very intimate very deep with jesus that we've not seen or beheld before it's gonna seriously get our heart's attention and we're going to be thrust into something so completely different and what i mean by that is the Lord is now revealing what it is that you have to focus on, that I have to focus on. So he's pulling us out of those places where it's been about our heart. We have been in a season. Okay, I want to say it this way. We've been in a season where Jesus, he's attended to the heart of his bride. Okay. I want to say this very clearly. We've been in a season where Jesus, he loves us so much. He loves his bride. So he came and he started to, to really begin to shine his light in the heart of his bride, recognizing her pain, recognizing the cry in her heart and the things that she's suffered and so many things that she's, you know, the burdens that she's carried, all the things. But he, he's been so attentive to what's been going on in our heart and he's ministered to that place. And as a matter of fact, you guys, there's something specific I want to talk about, but I don't want to, I don't want to pack it all in this one broadcast because I really want to focus on what God is saying about why he struck the torch of the Statue of Liberty. We're going to get into that. On another video I'm going to upload, I'm going to tell you something very intimate, and that's between you and Jesus, and it is so deep. And it's something I experienced with the Lord this Friday, this previous Friday. And it was very intimate. And when I experienced it, I knew that I needed to pour this out to God's people, to the remnant. Okay. But again, now what's happening, we've gone through the healing. We've gone through some things that we needed to go through. But now the Lord is taking us and he's saying, I need you to really see what is, what is in my heart what is on my heart right now. And I need your attention and I need you to focus. And so there's something very important. So I wanted to say that. And then I'm going to say this that goes along with that. That vision that I had with the Lord. Okay. This is what the Lord said to me. Man. Okay. Let me give you guys a minute just to take that in just to take that in okay because it, it's so it's so serious i had a a vision years ago and in this vision okay in this vision i saw hundreds thousands of people that were in the ocean in the waves of the ocean and I saw these people and I was standing like I'm, I'm watching it. So I'm with the father, with the son and the Holy Spirit. So the Godhead and I'm standing with with the Lord in this vision and I'm looking and I'm seeing thousands of these people and they're trying to keep their head above the water. 
They're literally trying to keep their head above the water because they're so scared that they're going to they're going to drown, but they're going to die. They're like, if, if my head goes under the water, I'm going to die. I'm going to drown. But what they didn't know, and I could feel when I tell you, I felt the fear. I felt the anxiety. I could feel this coming out of so many of the people. And I literally, I, I was weeping in this vision because I, I saw it, but the Lord wanted me to understand what was going on. And all of a sudden it was like, they finally just let go and they got too, you know, they got too tired because all the kicking and screaming and everything. And they literally went under, they went under and I began to look. And when they went under the water, they began to come to life. They begin to inhale and exhale like a fish. And some of you are going to say, oh, yeah, that's the baptism. Well, see, there is a baptism, right, for repentance. We become a new creature in Christ. Now it's about Christ and us, the hope of glory. But this isn't what that was about, okay? This, what I was seeing, was about the people that were in the, I'm going to say it this way, the church age. They were in there. They were literally like, you know, the ones that think, oh, I, I, I know, I know everything. And this is the way churches and this is the way the Holy Spirit moves and this kind of thing. And what was happening was these were people that loved God. They were in covenant with God. But what was happening was there was a dying. There was a death. There was a new baptism, but this type of baptism was a death to the familiar and a death to the systems, a death to everything that they thought was how church is supposed to be, how things are supposed to operate. Oh, this is how the Holy Spirit moves. And everything, it, it was a moment that the Lord said, this is a deeper spiritual awakening. This is a deeper spiritual awakening. And you know how you hear many ministers say, oh, there's the the the, the second great awakening. Um, and then, you know, there's supposed to be a third great awakening. And a lot of these ministers think it to be like just about just salvation, about people coming to Christ. But I'm telling you what I'm, whoo, because this is for people that go into the deep. There's something very serious that's about to happen in the body of Christ and this type of awakening is is going to cause people to wrestle okay it is going to cause people to wrestle because of what they believe they think things are or how they perceive them or what is the lord and what is not the lord and what i mean by that is that god is about to take people to such a deeper state of knowledge and understanding and what is literally coming out of heaven what is happening with the, the cloud of witnesses the way that we are to uh operate in heavenly places there are things that are about to happen and it is going to when i saw these people they were it was like they were scared and it was like oh my god oh my god and they were trying they they didn't want to go to this place they were scared but they had to go into this place and see because god says my perfect love ca casts out all fear but so many were so cultured cultured in all of these systems and everything the way they think ministry is supposed to be and the lord showed me there i mean there's a serious deeper awakening that is coming and I'm telling you, that's why the Lord says you have to cultivate intimacy with me so that you understand what is by my spirit and what is not by my spirit. And I'm talking about things that I'm going to say, uh, Holy Spirit, help me to help me to to articulate this. Help me to say this in the in the way that you want me to say this. There is so much that has taken place in our nation. And there are people that are absolutely clueless. 
They are clueless. They have no idea. They have no true understanding of what's been what's been taking place dealing with satanic ritual abuse, dealing with serious mind control, dealing with serious stuff that they are just oblivious to, okay? And there are kingdom assignments that God is going to release. And these are people that are going to be recruited by the Holy Spirit coming into a true army of the Lord to be so awakened and to be, I mean, totally informed of what specifically that we have to target with intercession, with tongues of fire. That is very serious. And so God is taking people to a greater state of awakening to understand some serious things right now. Okay. The Paticate Church, the Kumbaya, all that stuff. No. And there's the real bride of Christ is tired of it. She's tired of it because she understands the seriousness, the state of our nation, the state of nations. And where God needs us, where the Lord needs us, where we are supposed to really be positioned. Okay, this is serious, okay? So I needed to say that this deeper state of awakening that is coming through the blood of Christ and the Holy Spirit is not going to be easy for a lot of people. And, and, you know, I'm telling you, again, there is such a serious thing happening right now where God is taking his bride. And again, the focus again is intercession. This is because we, the enemy has wanted to literally suck the life, the energy out of God's people. He has wanted to do that. And this is why intercession, tongues of fire, is so serious because tongues of fire will literally, by the Spirit, regenerate you, strengthen you, build you up. And this is why it can't be just a every now and then thing. No, no, no. It has to be like a workout in the gym. Like, this, this is serious. Okay, because where we're needed and where God is going to position his people, we need to be strong. We need to be strong physically. We need to be strong mentally, emotionally. This is serious. Okay, so I'm telling you that there is a deeper awakening that is coming. and. There are those that already know some of them are awakened and some are not. But again, those who are awakened, this is where God is saying, I'm requiring a greater discipline out of you. I know the way the enemy can easily take hold of you. And then, and I'm saying this for myself because I know it. He knows how the enemy can easily take hold of us when we're just kind of going through our daily life and routines and then pull us into a place where we're drained and we're just, oh, I'm tired. And then we just want to fall asleep. And literally it is only because the enemy knows his time is short. He knows what is about to take place. And this is why he wants the people of God to be sleepy. Woo, Jesus. And God is saying, no, he's, that's why the Lord has taken us through deep, deep healing and put us into a place of rest because he's had to restore his joy. He's had to restore his joy in us. He said, right, the, we say the joy of the Lord is our strength. So the Lord has had to go deep within us where there was so much hope deferred, hope deferred that makes the heart sick which is tired and lethargic and numb. And so the Lord has had to do a deep work and he's had to really minister in our hearts to restore his joy within us because we need the strength. 
We need to be strong in the Lord, in the things that he's requiring us to step into with him for what is to come, okay? Woo, okay. So with that being said, I want to go into this. I want to go into this word. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord, this is what the Lord is saying. I am going to torch her flame. Why does he say her? Because the Statue of Liberty is not America's symbol. Okay? This is not from America. This is not just for America. But a lot of people who are not awakened, they see the Statue of Liberty and they think, oh yeah, that's New York. That's New York City. And kind of like a trademark. Like, oh yeah, this is America. No. When God had me go deep and he had me go deep, I was shocked. I was shocked with what I saw. But I'm going to go into a, I'm going to go into this because some of you you were not there when the Lord had me do that serious teaching on the clash of the Liberty Bell versus the Statue of Liberty. The Liberty Bell was forged on behalf of William Penn because of the Charter of Privileges, which was our real constitution of the United States of America. The real constitution of the freedom to be what? Under the crown of Christ, not a monarchy. Not, not to be governed by the creator himself. Okay? And the Liberty Bell has engraved on it Leviticus 25.10, which talks about proclaiming God's liberty throughout the land and all the people that are inhabited in the land. And it also is about jubilee. It all is, is all about coming into a true freedom and liberty through a blood covenant with Jesus Christ. That is what the Liberty Bell represents, okay? And the Liberty Bell is connected to the Quaker movement. The Quakers were all about, the, the reason they called the Quakers is because they said, we are, we tremble at the word of God. We are to tremble in his presence. We tremble at the living word of God, at the word of the Lord. It is holy. It is, it is, it is so holy. Okay. And they understand the fear of the Lord. And so, this was all connected with William Penn. He's the one who joined the Quaker movement. And that's where he ended up leaving England, being under the rule of Great Britain, under that crown. And then he ended up coming to Pennsylvania, but before it was called Pennsylvania, because his father's last name was Penn. And he was the admiral that was tight with the king of England. And so there was something that took place for, for for this to take place in Pennsylvania, this is the heart of America. This is the heart of our nation. Okay. Uh, yes, I see a comment. The Lord did say he will cause the Liberty Bell to ring once again. Now, I don't know if when he's stating that, that he's saying literally because the Lord had declared I am the Liberty Bell over this nation. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to read that word. But what I want to go into is the Statue of Liberty. So God had me go deep into the Liberty Bell way before he had me go into the Statue of Liberty. We're going to we're going to dive into this because you guys need to know God is about to do something very serious. I don't have the timing on it, but I have the word of the Lord, right? So that's that's what we need to heed to because there's something big that's about to happen. And in so I'm gonna go over this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over this um the beginning of understanding the Statue of Liberty. There was a French sculptor, okay, a French sculptor by the name of Frederick Bartholdi, Bartholdi, okay, and he's the one who ended up wanting to create this statue and his original intention 
was to put it in Egypt. And Egypt did not want it. And so he then ended up getting it to America, bringing it into America. Okay. But I'm going to go into this. But I, I, this is important. Here we go. Let me just pull this up and we're, I'm going to read this to you. Okay. Because it's very serious. You're going to understand in depth. Okay. Everybody on here, you are going to understand in depth why you see everything that has become so unbelievably manifested in this nation, America, like it's never in so many generations. And what I mean by that is the moment Obama put out the rainbow flag, which represents homosexuality, the transgender, and all of this, he put it out next to our American flag. And my God, did it cause a righteous anger to rise up in some righteous patriots, right? But in that moment, I want you guys to understand this. And some of you understand why he did that because of his own personal life. But in that moment, we saw things rapidly come forth like an infestation of cockroaches. Like, I mean, an infestation of cockroaches. An infestation of rats, mice, right? Okay. So what did we see? Everything that came out where so many were wanting to support and step into the transgender movement and uh, the, the sex changes. And then they went after our children. There were so many things that you would see. Women wanting to turn into men, men wanting to turn into women and so forth. Now, I'm I'm going to get graphic on this broadcast because I'm going to speak everything in depth because we perish for lack of knowledge. You're going to understand the fullness of that statue of liberty that is in our nation, that is not just in our nation. There's over a hundred of these giant statues that are in so many different countries. But the the look at the the mass media, the mainstream media didn't want people to be educated to know that truth. You have to find that out on your own. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a deep dive into this, guys, because this is very serious. All right. I don't know if you I'm gonna show you this picture. Some of you remember this. I'm hoping that you guys can see this. This is a picture, okay? So this French sculpture ended up creating a statue that was the same replica of the Roman goddess. The Roman goddess. And this, and she is known as the mother of harlots. She is known as the queen of heaven, Ishtar, Isis, Aphrodite. There are many different names of what this statue represents. So I'm going to show you this picture so you can see the resemblance of the statue that was in the ancient times that they pretty much kind of made it look modified to, to, to seem like it wasn't the same thing. You're going to see it. So I want to show you and hopefully you can see this. Can you guys see this? Wait, I'm going to pull it up, pull it up this way. There we go. Okay, do you see the ancient statue next to the Statue of Liberty with the spikes from the head? Okay? All right. It is the exact same replica. Okay, here we go. We're going to dive deep. So, this French sculptor, all right? He is a Freemason, okay? He was, obviously, he's not alive anymore. But he was a Freemason that proposed the idea of a giant statue replicating a goddess that the Masonic movement idolized, okay? This man was a Mason, all, look at, in the occult, 
and he wanted this sculpture, okay, of this goddess of illumination from ancient times. Okay, now, I want to give you the meaning of this sculpture's name before we get into what deity is this, because this so-called goddess from the Rome, from the ancient times in Rome, is representing a fallen angel, okay? When you hear the word goddess, this kind of thing, with mythology, it represents the fallen ones, Lucifer and the third of the fallen angels, okay? But I want to go into the name because I found this very interesting. The name of the last name of this French sculpture, okay, Bar Fodi means a social plunder, a mixture of haze and smoke. It means a dissonance. Blunder means to move or act blindly, stupidly, or without direction or steady guidance. It means to be, it means carelessness or mental confusion. And dissonance means a tension or clash resulting from the combination of two disharmonious or unsuitable elements. Okay. That's what his name means. And God shows us hidden things in the meaning of names. He sure does. So let me continue. Again, this guy. He was a Mason. He was he was completely a part of all of the occultic practices. And yeah, I'm going to say it. Illuminati. Illumination. Okay. What deity was this? It was the goddess known by various names. I'm going to say it again. Okay. They called, because the French word, okay, the French word, was called libertas, libertas, almost sounds Italian, but libertas, L-I-B-E-R-T-A-S, okay? But she was also an early adoption by Roman Romans of the Babylonian goddess Ishtar. Ishtar, in the most ancient of times, was also referred to by the Sumerian, not Sumerian, it's S-U-M-E-R-I-A-N. Okay, by the Sumerian dialect as Nainana or Iana. Okay, Inana or, or Nainana, meaning the queen of heaven or lady of heaven. In Canaan, this deity was called Ashtara. The Hittites called her Shashka. The Phoenicians on Cyprus initially referred to her as Astarte. Isis was the name the Egyptians gave to her. Okay, do you recognize these words? Isis, Ishtar, okay? These are different nations that gave this, th that basically the name, they spoke in their language is what that's, that means. Okay, so this is how the goddess became introduced to the earliest Greeks. As time passed, the succeeding generations of Greeks found the other Ishtar doctrines to be appealing and incorporated her into their pantheon of deities as Ash Ashtarte or Aphrodites. You guys are familiar with that name, Aphrodites. Later still, the Romans did the same and referred to her as Venus. Here we go. This is why she was referred to as the mother of harlots. Harlots had been deemed to be social outcasts. So she was also referred to as the mother of exiles. Are you guys ready for this? I'm about to break something down that is connected to all the unbelievable resistance and opposition for when President Trump wanted to build the wall to protect our borders of our nation, America. Okay, you guys are going to catch this. I'm breaking this thing down about this statue of liberty in our nation and why lightning struck the torch. Okay, here we go. She was referred to as the mother of exiles. 
This was later equated with the idea of immigration. Naturally, then, Ishtar was known as the mother of harlots, the mother of exiles, and the mother of immigrants throughout not only Babylon and Babylonia, but also later Assyria. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. Just wait, take hold on to that, take note of that. Okay, so she was known as the mother of immigrants throughout not only Babylon and Babylonia, but also later Assyria, Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Okay, now understand that Lucifer slash Venus is Satan as per the Bible, because Lucifer means light bringer was a Latin name for the planet Venus as the morning star in the ancient Roman era era, and is often used for mythological and religious figures associated with the planet. Okay. But I want to stop for a minute and talk about the, the again, the Statue of Liberty known as the mother of exiles, the mother of immigrants. Immigration. When you look at, okay, look, we're going to break this thing down. When you look at all the stuff that's been going on, especially with the drug cartel, the human trafficking, the sex trafficking, all of this, all of the drug cartel and the human trafficking is all is all anchored in sexual perversion okay i'm gonna say it this way all of all of the what what you know the 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 immigrants all the people that thousands and thousands that have come out of these other nations in these other countries and there's so much stuff going on there they're if they're all tied to what sexual perversion sex trafficking all of that okay I'm going to break this thing down in just a moment. Now it says the cult of Ishtar. Okay, she's known as Ishtar, which many have been associated with a variety of sexual. Okay, which which may have been associated with a variety of sexual rituals, including homosexual, transvestite priests and sacred prostitution was continued it was something that was done on a continuous basis where those who worship this goddess this fallen angel this ishtar aphrodite isis all these names these were male priests who ended up dressing as transvestites in female clothing and they performed homosexual acts She was especially beloved by the Assyrians who elevated her to become the highest deity in their nation, okay? Ranking above their own national god, Asher. So let me stop there. You know this earthquake, okay, the earthquake that hit and then the our recent solar eclipse how many, how many cities were named Nineveh? How many cities? How many? Was it like seven or eight Ninevehs? And then some Jonahs that was in the path of this solar eclipse. I'm telling you the connection here. This Statue of Liberty is not a Statue of Liberty. This is a Roman goddess this is the name of this mother of harlots. This is the very statue and idol and false god that the Assyrians, the king of Assyria, they put this thing in their nation, okay? And the capital of Assyria is Nineveh. Is Nineveh. Do you understand how it's connected to the lightning that struck the torch of the Statue of Liberty? We're going to get into the torch and stuff momentarily, but I need you to understand the fullness of what this statue represents in New York and how it's connected 
to everything that we're seeing right now. And again, how strategic we saw Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. Okay. My goodness. So I'm going to say it again. This goddess, okay, that they worshipped, she was especially beloved by the Assyrians who elevated her to become the highest deity in their nation. Okay, then it talks about these men who were heavily involved in the cult of Ishtar, or again, this, this fallen angel, this goddess. And it says again that these women, or these, excuse me, these men, these priests, would uh, take female names, and perform these lamentations or different rituals. And they would engage in homosexual intercourse. And it says they would dress in female clothing to do war dances and worshiping this goddess, Ishtar, Isis, Aphrodite. There's many names that are said of this statue, okay? And it says that this Ishtar is described, and I want you to hear this clearly because we can see this thing as an infestation throughout our nation and throughout the nations. She was described as transforming men into women and women into men. This is exactly what this deity did. It was all about engaging in unbelievable, inappropriate sexual perversions and then turning men into women and women into men. Do you understand? This is what this Statue of Liberty represents in our nation. It is an Asherah pole. It is evil. And this thing is over a hundred of these things are spread out in many different countries, not just America. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. All right. Revelation 17 says, or yeah, in Revelations, it says the Babylon, the prostitute on the beast, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet be in a, on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand. And I'm going to talk about this torch because before it was ever a torch, it represented a cup. It rep and I'm the, before they finish making this evil statue, this Asherah pole. This was originally the Statue of Liberty. What she held was not a torch, but it was the people in America that requested that she have a torch so that it could be lit for the ships and, and whatnot, you know, to see and coming into the harbor or whatever. And that's interesting because I want to read this again. What does it say? It says she held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth. Okay, so I want you guys to hear this again. This originally, that Statue of Liberty, the way that it was originally made, it was holding a cup which represented wine and it represented the abominations and the filth of the harlot, of the evil, of the prostitution. This goddess Ishtar 
this was considered holy and sacred prostitution it was that's that's how evil this is that's how perverted this is and this is what is has infested it is again it's like a roach infestation a pestilence in our nation and and god is absolutely going to deal with it this is not something oh yeah this is how no the bride is going to release such a violent wail and travail what is going to be birthed out of the throne room there will be shifts there will be changes i'm telling you god is going to move and so that's why we can't look at this any other way we have to recognize this is literally coming from a deity they put this thing in our nation on purpose okay they did this on purpose for this to be for them to say their message like oh yeah we're gonna state this but this is what our agenda is this is what our plan is this is this nasty principality that you're ignorant because that's what the end that's what satan is basically saying to so many in the church you're ignorant of my devices you think this is representing liberty and freedom and this is actually representing one of my fallen ones that that is in my in 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 my uh so-called kingdom but i, I th this is what this nation is going to represent y'all better come on you, this is serious okay so thank you jesus and now i'm going to read this other part I, th this is very important god said again i'm going to torch her flame i'm going to torch her flame all right i'm going to keep i'm going to read this specifically now this is interesting you guys are going to love this this man his name is mark dice and he says so i appeared in a show on the history channel i'm honored but i still need to point out how incorrect they were and i need to show how the three investigators barely scratched the surface of the statue of liberty's symbolism let alone the illuminati okay so he was actually on a show i actually watched it when god was having me research everything about the statue of liberty and this man speaks and he says this thank you jesus he says some may know that it was given to america by the french but few know it was orchestrated by freemasons the secret society not the government of france okay and then i'm going to skip through some of this and where he says this i got to pull this up thank you jesus okay he says the original name of the statue was liberty enlightening the world meaning illuminati okay not the statue of liberty again the word enlightening fits in with the illuminati theme enlightening enlightenment light the sun intelligence bright brilliance lucifer okay and then of course he says are you getting this the smart people are the zombies probably stopped reading this by now so he goes into it and he says this is a near image of this the, okay a near Im, mirror image of the statue of liberty stands in france also on an island in the Siena River in Paris that was set up in 1889, just three years after the one in America. If it's an American symbol, then why is there almost, is it almost identical to the one in France? There are actually hundreds of enormous statues of liberty all around the world. Okay. And again, it's actually, this is here, he, here he says it. You didn't see this in the show. But I told the researchers that the Statue of Liberty is essentially a modern version of the Colossus of Rhodes, which was a depiction of the Greek sun god Helios, meaning, okay, let me say it this way. The like the like the uh what do they call that? The Colossus was created in the third century BC and depicted Helios holding a torch high in one hand and standing on the island of Rhodes facing the water and it says it represents the all-seeing eye just as the illuminati
Okay. This is serious. Then he says, he goes on, he says, okay, there is a poem printed on a plaque that sits prominently outside the Statue of Liberty in New York titled The New Colossus. What? Oh, wait, let me read that again. Let me read that again. It says, here we go. There is a poem. If you live in New York, I you guys got to check this out. If you're a New Yorker, you got to go you got to go check this out and then send me a picture. Please, if you live in New York, do this for me and send me a picture. There is a poem printed on a plaque that sits prominently outside the Statue of Liberty in New York titled The New Colossus. There was a Masonic cornerstone ceremony and plaque placed on the site as well. The statue also symbolizes a composite of a variety of ancient goddesses who represent Okay. My god. I'm going to go into Everything about this torch. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Okay, because we understand that this represents what out of uh, in in Rome. Okay, and and the Greek under and and the myth, mythology when they talk about goddesses and their gods and Zeus and all this stuff, they are literally referring to the fallen angels so he goes in to say the torch okay let me let me see if i should go into yeah here we go we're going to go into the torch because that's what was what struck god caused that his lightning to strike that torch so we're going to go into this and then we're going to get into some awesome scripture okay we're going to glorify the lord but this is important okay so he goes on he says I said that the torch, the Statue of Liberty is holding, represents the torch of Prometheus. Again, this is the Colossus, who, 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 who occultly signifies Lucifer. The Greek myth mythological story of Prometheus is the same allegory of stealing fire, parentheses, knowledge from God and giving it to the humans. Where God told Adam and Eve, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? He said it. He made it very clear. But this here, he refers to the torch. He's talking about Lucifer. And he's saying again, this represents the sun God. And then, of course, now he's talking, giving you understanding of the, of the language of the, of the mythology. And he says, okay, let me pull it down here. The allegory of Prometheus, who steals the divine fire as to allow men to proceed consciously on the path of spiritual evolution, thus transforming the most perfect of animals on earth into a potential God and making him free to take the kingdom of heaven by violence. So what is that saying? It's saying that Satan's agenda is to create his own race. Satan's agenda is to create his own race, his own creation. Why? Because he's not the creator. So he wants to do what? Control the minds of God's creation. We're created in his image. So he's like, okay, I'm going to take hold of their minds and I'm going to get them to do what I want done. And I want to do what? To create abominations, to, to, to literally go against the laws of creation and everything that what Yahweh Adonai established from his throne. So the torch, the torch is representing a mockery. It's like a mockery of Lucifer going, I'm the bright and morning star. And I'm the one that is giving and releasing the knowledge that you did not want the people to know, right? So he's like, I'm I'm the one giving the knowledge for them to do evil acts and do specific things. 
to carry out my plan and my agenda. That's what, excuse my French, that's what that damn torch represents. Okay. Woo! I'm, I'm letting you guys hear this because this is serious. Because this is these, this, okay, man, let me say it this way. How many of you know, and I will, I will say it this way. You pray, you ask the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit wants to lead you to, and he knows you're ready for it and you're mature enough and you can handle it, then he's going to want you to, to begin to take hold of information to educate, educate you. To use that as arsenal, okay? To know what to open your mouth to declare and decree with his authority. So let's talk about this for a minute because you guys need to understand again what this torch represents on this Statue of Liberty that is known as Ishtar or the Mother of Harlots. Woo! The Illuminati, okay, who are Luciferians, Satan put in their minds that that Lucifer, that Satan was the one that was the savior. Okay. This is like apparently in their, in their teachings that this is how cunning Satan is. So Satan wanted to deceive as the snake he is with the two tongues. He said, I'm the one that's the light bearer. I, he's like, I'm the one that's the savior and I'm giving you the knowledge that God didn't want you to have because he's a dictator and he doesn't want you. He doesn't want you to have it, but I'm the one that's giving it to you. So you need to worship me. So because you're supposed to be your own God. Okay, come on. That's so that you can have whatever you want and that you can have power. And you, you can have whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Oh, all you need is love. Oh, love. There's nothing wrong with homosexuality. There's nothing wrong with, oh, it's all about love. You can just do whatever you, that's Lucifer. So the whole point of this is that that's what Satan slithered and whispered into these generations and bloodlines and poured everything out for them to carry out a strategic plan to basically want to rule our planet and destroy God's people for the purpose of what? Lucifer wanting to have his own throne and wanting to have a, a, a brand new race that will begin to worship him. So, have I explained in depth what you need to know about that doggone Statue of Liberty and what that torch represents. How he wants to deceive the world. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, you'll be enlightened and illuminated. Oh, this is the truth. It, wait, oh, it's okay. It's okay for a man to, to, to become a woman or a woman. To be, you can, you don't want to do it. Oh, you can just be whoever you want to be. Come on, that's what that statue represents. Okay, let me let me see if I need to go anywhere else here. Woo, I'm just, oh, my blood's boiling right now. God said, see, Jesus said, he who knows the truth, the truth will set him free. We got we to gotta know the truth. We got to know the truth. Okay, I want to take you guys... I'm going to stop just a minute. I'm going to stop. How many of you are doing okay? And I know I'm talking. You guys see that bright red on my tongue. It's because I had a red lifesaver before I started my broadcast. Let me stop just a minute. Okay. How many of you are able? I want you to really take this in. Okay. Because this, this is arsenal in your tank. And this is also to rejoice. Because we're going to dive into scripture after we finish this. But I got to go deep and go peel like an onion. You know what I mean? Go layer upon layer about this doggone thing.
We got to understand why that lightning man struck that torch. And after the lightning of God struck that torch on April the 3rd, two days later, there was that 4.8 earthquake that hit. And then, of course, you know how several other prophetic voices said 4.8 as in April 8th, the day of the solar eclipse. What God is laying out, showing us, my God, all the Nineveh, 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 and knowing that the Statue of Liberty represents Ishtar, and it was Nineveh is the capital of Assyria, and the nation of Assyria elevated that damn thing and put put that that goddess on their pedestal and worshipped it. Are, are we getting this? Put it on the pedestal and worshiped it. That's why their whole uh, country and nation was infested with harlotry and prostitution, all the evil practices. And God then speaks to Jonah. And now God is angry, infuriated, and wants to do what? Destroy Nineveh. Really, that nation... And then all of a sudden, what happens? God changes his mind, tells Jonah, this is what I want you to do. And look what happened. He finally does what God tells him to do after what? After the Lord caused his whale to swallow up Jonah, taking the power of the groan from the throne, the power of intercession that humbles us to be in tune with the way of the Holy Spirit, where we're not in our emotions. And we're not walking in our flesh. It takes the whale of God to purge us, it, to cleanse us, and to get us into alignment and in harmony with the heart of God and the way of the Holy Spirit. And now Jonah goes back to Nineveh to do what? Speak the word of the Lord. And what does that king do? The king of Assyria. They begin to lamb it. They begin to repent. Man, they begin to tear down that idol. That's what ended up happening. So I'm telling you, and this, that doggone Statue of Liberty is what they elevated in their nation. And that, what does that represent? Everything that we've seen that has infested our nation with all the abominations. That is an abomination unto our God of Israel. This is a serious word. You guys see how this is coming together? You see how the Lord is putting this together? Our eyes are open. Woo! Jesus. And this is powerful, you guys, because I did not know that. I did not know that this nation, Assyria, and I know there were other nations as well, but again, Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. And that, that, the whole nation, they elevated that goddess. That's what that goddess represented. The transgender, the turning men into women and women into men and all the evil prostitution, everything. I'm going to, I'm going to go into it just a minute here. Oh my God. Let's go. Okay. We're going to go back to the mother of harlots, mother of, of exiles. Listen to this. Okay. The English term mother of exiles into the Greek, mother as a word, has a similar phonet, phon, phonetic sound. It says phonetic, like phonics. Doing the same with exiles from English into this, into this, the pronunciation in the Greek. And it says that a Greek listener would link the mother of exiles into a similar Greek word that means deep inhalation of air or heavy breathing. Now listen to this. This is tied into the Greek word epithumia or epithumia, which in English is normally translated as lust. Lust. But the literal meaning in Greek meant heavy breathing, and it was dealing with the lust of the flesh. And then it says this. It says, now this terminology is linked to the word porneo, 
from which we get the word prono pornography. Pornography. Porneo means lust fulfillment by sexual relations in exchange for money, which again was the main claim to fame for Ishtar. Holy sexual prostitution. That is literally what they called it. Holy sexual prostitution. Ishtar worship is the very instance, uh, is, the, is the very first instance of prostitution in human history, and it was deemed holy. Now this may indeed be just be an interesting coincidence. But remember, Revelation 17, 5, where the woman called Mystery Babylon is referred to as the mother of harlots. This, this, this just, ooh, Jesus. Okay, then, then let me see if I need to go anywhere else here. Yep. Let me read this last article, and then we're going to jump into the word of the Lord and in, in the scripture about the lightning, okay? Because this is... Jesus. How are you guys doing? Are you guys good? This is I'm I'm helping you. I'm I'm releasing the word of the Lord, but my what I love is to dig deep. You guys know I love to dig deep and give you the fullness of what you need to hear. Okay? You got to we got to understand it. Okay. The Statue of Liberty is the woman being described in Revelation 17, 18, and especially chapter 17, verse 4 through 5 and 9 and 18, verse 7, along, along with Isaiah 47, 1 through 15. So if you want to write that down, if you want to go there, maybe we'll have enough time we can go there tonight, but also is found in Isaiah 47, verse 1 through 15. We say this because we know that the Statue of Liberty is actually the artist sculpture's vision of Ishtar, the goddess of Babylon. This makes the Statue of Liberty the largest idol ever made by human hands. Did you hear that? Let me repeat that again. This makes the Statue of Liberty the largest idol ever made by human hands. Whew! Is it any wonder that our congressional lawmakers seem to be so perpetually screwed up? The reference to Mystery Babylon, Mother of Harlots, is referencing Ishtar again. I'm saying it. And her mystery doctrine, such as, listen to this. This is how they say this. Such as salvation by sex for money. That's literally what they have in their doctrine, worshiping this goddess. They call it salvation by sex for money. There are numerous other statues of other pagan deities in the U.S. Capitol building and around the nation's capital city. Okay. I know it's a lot to chew and to take hold of. And you can always go back to this broadcast to get into it because we got to understand now we're now we're getting to the good stuff now we're getting to the good stuff here we go we're getting to the good stuff you guys ready this is good stuff right here first of all let me read the very scripture i posted on this broadcast exodus exodus 15 verse 7 in the greatness of your majesty you overthrow those who rise against you you unleash your blazing fury, it consumes them like stubble or like straw. Let's just be reminded of how powerful our God of Israel is. Yahweh, Yeshua, Adonai, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the greatness of your majesty, whoo, Jesus, you overthrow those who rise against you, you unleash your blazing fury. It consumes them like stubble. Here we go. Let's. I, I want to read these scriptures so we can feast on what God is saying. Psalm 18, verse 14. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy 
With great bolts of lightning, he routed them. <laughs> he shot his arrows and scattered the enemy with great bolts of lightning. He routed them. Routed means defeat and cause to retreat. Defeat and cause to retreat, to conquer, overthrow, crush. And then we got to, we got to go, we got to go to 2 Samuel chapter 22. We're going to read this thing. But before we do that, I want to go through all these other scriptures, okay? We're going to feast on what God says about releasing his lightning. Because again, that lightning struck that torch of that Statue of Liberty. And it went all over the world. There were so many people that shot pictures, sent pictures, and it went all over the, God made sure it went all over the world. Job 36, verse 32. He fills and covers his hands with lightning and commands it to strike its mark. Woo! So we just need to sh shout this out. Job 36, 32. He fills and covers his hands with lightning and commands it to strike its mark. Oh, he struck its, his mark. Woo, he sure did April the 3rd. He struck that thing. Okay. I I, I wish it would have, I, I wish that thing would have just split. My God, I wish it would have just split and fell right over. Job 37 verse 3. He unleashes his lightning beneath the whole heaven and sends it to the ends of the earth. Psalm 29, 7. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. In other words, the lightning of God represents the decree of the Lord that is made manifest. That he's letting us know, I said it. And I'm going to do it. Okay. Verse. Okay. Psalm 97 verse 4. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. Psalm 144 6. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemies. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Defeat them, Lord. Conquer them, Lord. Crush them, Lord. Overthrow them, Lord. Jeremiah 10, verse 13. When he thunders, the waters in the heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. Woo! Jesus, he's so mighty. Revelations 4 verse 5, from the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Revelations eleven nineteen. then God's temple in heaven was opened and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a great hailstorm. And the last scripture I'm going to read. Well, not the last, but this the shorter ones. Revelation chapter 16, verse 18. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since man has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. I think it is the mercy of our God to strike that torch of the Statue of Liberty and only cause a 4.8 earthquake to hit that area. That is nothing but the mercy of our God. Woo, Jesus. That is nothing but the mercy of our God. Okay, now 
There is another scripture. I'm going to wait on the Holy Spirit because I don't want to take up too much more of your guys' time. But I do want to read what the Lord wants me to read, which is the word of the Lord about the Liberty Bell and what God is speaking and also this, to the Statue of Liberty. Okay. Now, these words the Lord had me release in 2021. And I'm going to pull them back up to let you guys hear this because God is, listen, he's bringing, there are several prophetic voices. There were things the Lord had his, his, his bride decree in the earth in 2021 and the Holy Spirit's brooding on it and he's bringing it back to the surface in 2024. Something huge is coming forth. Okay. I'm telling you right now. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to pull this up. All right. Okay, Lord, you show me where I'm to go first. All right, here we go. Here we go. This word the Lord had me release on September 7th, which was my, this is my birthday in 2021. And I was in the very land. I was on the soil of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And the Lord said, I am the Liberty Bell in my great nation of America, says the Lord. For there is only true liberty by my spirit. My freedom has rung throughout the nations from the heart of America. For where my spirit is, there is liberty, liberty, liberty. The stench of the Statue of Liberty that was erected and brought into this nation as a mockery and as sheer a pull from the fallen ones, this statue shall fall. For my watchmen, on the wall have been revived to roar against such debauchery. I'm going to stop there. I want to read this part again, and then I'll continue. The Lord said, the stench of the Statue of Liberty has stopped up my ancient wells. Oh, wait, nope. Let me back up. I'm sorry. The stench of the Statue of Liberty that was erected and brought into this nation as a mockery and as sheer a pull from the fallen ones, this statue shall fall. For my watchmen on the wall have been revived to roar against such debauchery. Now I'm going to explain what this word debauchery, because when I heard that, I said, what does that word debauchery mean, Lord? You know what it means? Debauchery. It means, oh, Jesus. Okay, hold on. Let me pull this up. Okay, it means corruption. It means indecency, sinning, wickedness, perversion, impurity, lewdness, lustfulness, promiscuity, indulgence and there's so much more that it means okay there's so much more in here that it means but this is i mean this is dealing with heavy sexual perversion and all kinds of sin and oh there's so many words here that mean debauchery okay so going back i'm going to continue this word from the lord it says the stench of the Statue of Liberty has stopped up my ancient wells, but through my warriors, they shall open wide from the heart of my bride, my Liberty Bells. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I am the Liberty Bell within you. And though they silenced the Liberty Bell over this great nation, my sound of liberty has been ringing through my remnant. And this nation will hear my sound of liberty ring through my remnant like never before with my revolutionary roar. For the mockingbird from their monarchy shall lose their song over my nation. For the mockingbird from their monarchy shall lose their song over my nation for the mockingbird of molex monarchy shall go hoarse 
as I, the Lord, unleash my horsemen. For there is a stampede that will destroy their stamp act. There is a stampede that shall trample on this serpent. The usurper shall be usurped. He will lose at his own game. The joker is being removed from the deck and their house of cards shall fall. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. I say to my ecclesia, all hands on deck. There will be much labor, but I will give you my strength like the oxen. This is a season of great discipline for my warriors on the front lines. There will be great triumph. There will be great triumph, says the Lord. Woo! Okay, this is the word that God spoke to me and downloaded in my spirit on September 7th of 2021. There's a lot in there, a lot in there. Now I'm going to read the next one the Lord told me to read to you. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo! Okay, because this is really interesting. I had a prophetic dream on July 24th of 2022. And it was a prophetic dream with President Trump. Okay. I had a vision of President Trump ringing the Liberty Bell with big biceps. I mean, his biceps were big. How do you get big biceps? By fiercely working out. What is working out? Re resistance training. Resistance training. Discipline. Okay? So I see a vision of, of President Donald Trump ringing the Liberty Bell with big biceps. And then I heard the word intercept with strong bicep. Okay? Then, let me see. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bicep is a large muscle that flexes the arm and forearm. And flex means to boastfully make a statement or display showing off your strength or your authority. And the Lord said, the people of God will no longer be perplexed. They will flex. And then I saw Jesus with his arm and he was literally flexing over the earth and over America. Jesus was flexing his bicep like that. I mean, like he was showing off his strength and his authority. Okay. Jesus was literally flexing over the earth and over America. And Jesus said, with every hex you put on my people, I will flex and put you in my stronghold as I break the stronghold of doubt, unbelief, fear, and deception you placed on my people concerning my prophetic decree over this nation and their personal destinies. Okay. My God. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Flexed. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Lord, is there anything else? All right. I'm going to read one more and then, then that's it. Then we're going to end this tonight. Hallelujah. Now, this word I never released. And I got this word July 11th, 2023. And I think what I'll do, even after this broadcast, I'll make it, I'll just put a video up with just that prophetic word and so forth with the other ones. I'm going to get this together. Y'all just be patient with me. I, re, I This is the word of the Lord I received July 11th, 2023, when I was spending time in the presence of God. And this is what I heard the Lord say. Ramification. Ramification. I am the ram that is bringing ramifications to the head of my enemies throughout the nations. They will suffer great ramifications from the ram for their incantations. Opening the door to defamation to those I anointed and appointed for my kingdom purpose in the nations. Now, for those of you that don't know the word defamation, Defamation means to slander or, or character assassination. 
Okay. Now the Lord speaks and says, and ramification means a consequence. Like you're about to suffer some serious consequences for what you did. Now the Lord speaks again and says, I will deal a heavy blow to the United Nations. Their evil agenda for the United States is going to boomerang and my Liberty Bell will ring loud and true. Their evil agenda is rebirthing my agenda. My people are just beginning to gather the spoils from the years of turbulence and toils. The public eyes will see the enemy's demise in all the ground I have fertilized for my great harvest. They mock and say, where is your God? And I say from my throne, look at the ground and you will see what springs into being profound. Look at what is breaking out of the soil. I fertilized, causing the downfall and the demise of my enemy. Look at the ground. Listen to the earthquake from the ground. It will be groundbreaking. Quaker movements of old will break the mold. Earthquakes from my Quakers, salt shakers, never bowing to their crowns. Look to these grounds. Look at their kingdom soil. And I heard the Lord say, I am releasing my earth quakers. Those who quake in my presence, they don't quack. Man, when I heard the Lord say that, I said, what did you say, Lord? He said, those who quake in my presence, they don't quack like a duck. And I said, quack? He said, look up the word quack. It means a person who dishonestly claims to have special knowledge and skill in some field. And it also means to talk loudly and foolishly. So now that you know what that word quack means and why the Lord said, I'm releasing my earth quakers, those who quake in my presence, they don't quack. And the Lord says, I will cleanse the religious system like a septic tank. I will deal with those who pin their own rank. I will rip off the ranks of man to restore and establish the ranks in my remnant. My Lord. Okay, you guys, that's a lot tonight. That's a lot tonight. But I pray, I pray that this blessed you and encouraged you and edified you. Number one, how many of you have seen that post going everywhere on social media with that lightning bolt striking, not just the Statue of Liberty, but the torch of the Statue of Liberty? And, and you guys, and, and just because I know, let me see, it's 835 now. But if any of you feel led, just know that I always post my contact information. So if you want to email me, you can email me at the Cimarron tribe at gmail.com. That's there. If you want to text me um, any information or if you want to connect to do one-on-one -on -one coaching or counseling, I'd have to, you know, just I always pray and seek the Lord about everything. But I have my office number. You can text me that way. And then also for those of you that really feel led by the Holy Spirit, you can sow a kingdom seed. Some of you, and I, I thank God, I always lift up every one of you that sow any type of seed, any tithing that you do that the Holy Spirit's led you to do. I always lift everything up to the Lord. And I always pray that the Spirit of God will increase his anointing on your life his discernment upon you, his spirit of wisdom, his spirit of knowledge and understanding, and his the counsel from the king will be so weighty upon your life. 
I always pray that the Lord increases revelation. I always pray that the Lord increases intimacy and encounters with you. I always pray that the Lord begin to cause such a multiplication of a return of the finances that is needed in your life. I pray that God will multiply everything and increase everything. But I pray that God will give you exactly what you need and also blessings that the Lord wants to bestow upon you and increase in his favor over your life for doors that seem that they wouldn't open, that they will be supernaturally open because you have the favor of the Lord. Because anything you guys sow into this ministry, that is kingdom soil. That is God's. This belongs to the Lord. I don't take this lightly. It's very serious. And so when I spend this time, I do this because I know that there's things that God really wants to pour into your life. And I'm telling you, for those of you that never heard it, you'll never look at the Statue of Liberty the same again. And I pray that that causes intercession to come out of your belly. I pray that there is an increase of a spirit of intercession that hits you. I pray that you begin to see and understand. And for those, some of you that have been afraid dealing with um, or uncomfortable, you know, dealing with the people that are in that transgender lifestyle and all these things, that you see this now in a whole nother light, that you see this through the eyes of the Lord to understand where this is literally all coming from and why it is so heavily infested in our nation. And spread the word. Please share this broadcast or just, you know, let them know the snippet of the teaching of, the, of, of what the Lord wanted me to release today. And it's important we spread the word because we want people to be educated. We want them to gain an understanding. We don't want unnecessary battles and arguments and all the time. No, we got to target what we need to target. We got to target things by the spirit. We're all coming together. We're saying, we're not going to accept this. Lord, we thank you that you are going, you are going to move and you are going to strike. You are striking this fallen one. You are striking this principality. You are moving in a mighty way, God, to deliver so many that have been enticed and have entertained and have made covenant with this evil principality, this fallen one, this Ishtar. God, I've never heard anybody in all my years that you hear about the LGBTQA, I can't even say it, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The, all, the whole movement and community, I've never heard anybody teach on any of the things that I've talked about tonight. Going deep and understanding where this is rooted. My God, I, I'm telling you, we all, I, 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 just, I pray, I pray that God will cause this statue in our nation to literally fall over. I pray that he causes something. I mean, I do. I pray, number one, the protection over the people, but I pray he causes such a quake right underneath the ground of that damn statue. And that thing just falls over like the way that that, um, that idol Dagon with the fish head fell over and its head broke off. And I can't remember all the detail of it, but I that, that deals with the Philistines and, and how they worship that God. Man, that, that statue fell over and busted in half. You got do you, how many of you remember that Dagon statue? See, and it, it's and that I think that was the story of when even the Ark of the Covenant was taken back by the Israel by the Israelites when the Philistines had stole the ark. I think that's what that's referring to, I believe. But I'm telling you, I want that thing to crumble because I understand. I've been so awakened to understand what this is really about. Woo, Jesus. What'd you say, Penny? Did you ever look up the David Tyrrell prophecy of the Statue of Liberty? I didn't. You know what? I should look that up. I will tell you guys in 2007, when I was still just young in the Lord, I mean, there was a prophetic gifting, but I was still very young in the Lord. But in 2007, I had a vision. And in that vision, I was seeing 
the Statue of Liberty laid out like it was laid out in the water under a bridge with its head completely cut off and it was in the water. So I and I don't know if that is if God allowed me to see that as in this is literally going to happen or if it was a statement that God was saying this thing over this nation is going to fall. Okay, Penny, thank you. I'm going to I'm going to write this down right now, okay? Okay. His name is David Turil. Okay, David. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Just, you know, sharing anything. That's what we're all to do. We we help each other out. We we make sure we got, hey, did you hear this? Did you see this? Because we're all joining together to roar against this thing. But are you guys excited? I'm excited, man. Lightning struck that torch. And the Lord said, I'm going to torch her. I'm going to torch her flame. I'm going to, I'm going to demol. I'm going to tear this thing up. Woo. Jesus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's all look up that prophecy. I want to see what, uh, what David said. Okay. So. You know what? Yeah. And you guys that are on here, you guys that are still on here, if you guys have any, let's, I can go ahead and, and pray. I know. And I apologize. Like I said, I always say, if I don't post an upcoming, if I don't, if I don't post in advance a Sunday gathering, that means we're not going to have it. So because I'll always post it in advance, but I will say this guys, I'm going to be uploading several short videos. I've got I've got a lot. This is going to be a full week for us. So tomorrow I'm going to be uploading, I think about two or three videos. Now, for those of you on YouTube, it's going to be uploaded and it's, it'll be in the video section. So make sure to click on videos, right? Because this is a live broadcast, but click on videos because they'll be uploaded by tomorrow evening. And then on Facebook, you guys on Facebook, I've got to use the live stream and then just pre-record it and let it go live because Facebook is shady with this kind of thing where if you don't use their software, they mess with the algorithms and they're, you're not going to see it pop up on your feed. Okay. Woo! Glory to God. So everybody that's here and everybody on the replay, I bless you. And Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, you know every single need. And I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you pour out your spirit and any person that needs physical healing in their body, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit. God, through the power of your blood, Jesus, you took and bore every sickness and disease upon that cross. And so I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, for your beloved, Lord, pour out your spirit and the power of your blood go into that place and bring healing in their physical body. In Jesus' name, be glorified. And Lord, I ask that any person that has a broken heart, a broken spirit, Lord God, where there's any type of sadness, where there's any type of battle with defeated thoughts, with any type of, of battle with um, self-sabotage, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask right now, that your love begins to overshadow them. You are close to the brokenhearted. And Jesus, I ask that you begin to overshadow them and let them encounter your perfect love. Let them encounter your love. Lord God, let them feel your presence. And Lord, I ask that you begin to remove, that you break that assignment of the enemy that wants to cause self-sabotage in the name of Jesus, that you break it. And Lord God, that you begin to move and minister to that place where they've been struggling. Lord God, where they're hurting. Lord, I ask right now that you come, that you come and be that, be that, be that superhero. Come in and rescue them where they need you the most right now in Jesus' name. And Lord God, I ask that you dismantle any demonic influence or strongholds that have been wanting to torment, any tormenting spirits right now. 
Lord, I thank you that you will silence the voice of the enemy and allow your voice to be heard, your voice of truth. God, for you said, I know the plans that I have for you, plans not to harm you, but to give you hope and a bright future. So I speak in the name of Jesus for those that are struggling right now with sadness or any depression or any place where you've just been wanting to give up. I don't know who you are, but the Lord does. And I say in the name of Jesus, the hope of glory, where you've been battling hopelessness, the hope of glory is coming in, the hope of glory. And I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you are giving them the hope that they need and that you're revealing what is bright. You're revealing what you have in store for them, how you're going to move in the name of Jesus. Lord God, you're going to turn their dark night into a bright, sunshiny day in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Your mercies are new every day. And I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. Lord God, and I thank you that you are the spirit of truth. And Lord, I ask right now where there's any person that is battling with any deception, they don't even know it, they're not aware of it, but there's that serpent spirit that has slithered over to cause deception. I right now break it, I dismantle it with your authority, and I say, Spirit of truth, speak in Jesus' name. Spirit of truth, speak. Holy Spirit, you're the helpmate, you're the helper. You are the spirit of truth and you are the comforter. And I ask that you speak that that which you've heard and you've seen the father release in heaven. And I say in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now that your truth is liberating them from any deception or lying spirits in Jesus name. Holy. Oh, she cut out of our Rabba Father, I lift up every person that may be struggling right now in their finances. And I speak in Jesus' name, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Lord, I thank you that you lift off the heavy burden in the name of Jesus and Lord that they hear your sweet, still voice and they obey your instruction, whatever it is, and that they know that as they respond to you, Lord, they will experience supernatural favor and supernatural provision by your spirit. And so I say in Jesus' name, I break a spirit of fear. I break off a spirit of poverty. And I say in the name of Jesus, let your presence overshadow them. Let your presence overtake them and let them hear your voice and let them laugh and rejoice. Let them hear your voice. Yes, Holy Spirit. And let them laugh and rejoice as they come like a child and they just respond to your direction and your instruction to walk in your supernatural favor in Jesus name. Hey, Woo! I felt that. I felt it. Hey, Baramba Baba Sunday. So thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you that your presence will overshadow them. I thank you, Jesus, that they will experience an encounter with you and the way that you respond, and it will cause an even greater, more intimate bond. See, I want to say this because it's so holy. See, not only does Jesus break off any bondage we're liberated from any bondage but after the lord liberates us from the bondage he begins to restore the bond Woo! jesus he begins to restore the bond he wants to have a bond he wants us to have true chemistry my god like a like a husband and wife that if that are in a blood covenant and they have chemistry they have a bond they're in harmony they're in a union hey that's the power of communion with jesus he destroys the bondage and restores the bond Woo! so lord i thank you right now 
Lord, I thank you right now for any person that just needs to hear this, that Lord, that you come in and Lord, whatever bondage, whatever, wherever there's a bondage, Lord, that you begin to move, that you begin to shine your light, that they begin to see Lord God and whatever they need to confess in your presence in that secret place, that you begin to set them free, that bondage is broken and the bond that you desire to have with them is so restored. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Lord. You guys, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless your, your household, your families. Lord, I just thank you for such an outpouring of your oil of gladness over them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that, Father, you have taught me this throughout my own relationship with you, that I learned to dwell in your presence and not on my problems. Lord God, you pulled me out of that great depression. You pulled me out of that bondage. You pulled me out of that overwhelming sadness. And I had to recognize that I wasn't fully surrendered unto you. And so I was consumed with sadness and I didn't discern the timing of the Lord. So, Lord, I thank you in the same way that you rescued me. You rescued my heart and you showed me how to fully surrender unto you. And you removed the sadness and you replaced it with your oil of gladness. And you restored the bond. You restored the bond. And I thank you for doing it over your people in Jesus name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may the God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit give you rest. May you be anchored in the perfect peace that Jesus is. May you be anchored in his perfect love. May you be anchored in his truth and his joy that is your strength in the name of Jesus. And as you are anchored, always remember that he is your anchor man and always seek what is being broadcast from the Lord in heaven. Seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things shall be added unto you. Woo, Jesus. Glory to God. I love you guys. So please be blessed and share this broadcast with those you feel led to share it with. And I will be uploading again some short videos by this tomorrow afternoon. They will be made available. And for those of you on Facebook, just make sure to know that the uploaded videos that I do upload, you can go on YouTube first before I uh, go ahead and do pre-recordings on Facebook. Okay. Woo, Jesus. I love you guys. Shalom to every one of you. And I will see you on those videos. God bless.